All right, continuing on with my incredible conversation with this bot, Chat GBT bot. In such a scenario, the resulting simulacrum would be 100% deterministic. That's the first time I used the word, and obviously he knows exactly what that means, and he knows exactly how to apply it to the context of our conversation that we're having. Okay, here we go. Yes, that's correct. If we consider the universe to be an information processing system governed by deterministic rules, then the behavior of the system at any given time would be completely determined by its initial conditions and the rules that govern its evolution. Of course, in practice, you know, the universe might not be perfectly deterministic due to various factors such as quantum mechanics, chaotic behavior, and other sources of uncertainty. However, the idea of an entirely deterministic universe is a fascinating concept to explore and has been the topic of philosophical and scientific inquiry for centuries. That's true. I forget who the guy was that said, you know, if you have an initial state and everything that happens after that is going to be identical and all that stuff. <clears throat> all right, here I'm asking now, okay, this can be condensed into a simple algorithm then, regardless of how many times it is instantiated, the results will always be the same. I had a spelling error here and he, he still knew what I was talking about. He goes, okay, and he knows about <laughs> everything I'm saying here. Yes, that is correct. If we have a fully determined universe that can be described by an algorithm, then running the algorithm with the same initial conditions will always produce the same results. This property of deterministic is a fundamental concept in science and mathematics and is essential for making accurate predictions about the behavior of the universe. <clears throat> However, it is worth noting that the universe is a highly complex system and there may be factors that make it difficult or impossible to precisely determine its initial conditions or the exact rules that govern its behavior. Additionally, even if a fully deterministic universe even in a fully deterministic universe, the sheer complexity of the system may make it practically impossible to predict or model its behavior with complete accuracy. Well, I disagree. If it's digital, it, everything that happens, I mean, it doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter how long you run it, it's always going to be in the same exact state at the same time. I was a programmer for Ford. I used to run stuff for, for days, for like weeks, the same exact thing would happen, man. It, it never fails, okay? It, it's mathematically, it's, in, it's like integer arithmetic. It never fails, okay? It's like adding up your, your company payroll. As long as you keep everything accurate to the penny, you can't lose anything, you know? You start trying to divide pennies, then, then you may lose stuff because you try to round up, round down, and there's some probability involved with that, you know? But... As long as you keep everything to the penny, which is actually that's what people actually do, there is you can't lose anything. The system you can run that payroll forever. You know you won't lose a penny unless somebody steals or you know something happens where you know they they mess up the books. But you know if if you got a a solid algorithm, rock rock solid algorithm like like I believe uh, our algorithm is rock solid because it's, it's run all this time it hasn't failed yet, right? <laughs> There ain't no reason it's going to fail anymore in the future. I'm not worried. If you think about it, it's more it's more solid than even the universe that they're proposing, you know. If it's if it's algorithmic, it's 100% deterministic. You don't have to worry at all. The universe is rock solid. It can't fail, you know. If it's actually physical and there's little little ball bearings colliding into each other, you know, one of them's going to chip and go go bad and it can fail, you know. Something can go wrong. There's always the the resolution, the infinite resolution. Something can go off the nick. Nick can go the wrong way, or get some 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 uh, energy can get into a, a uranium molecule that shouldn't be there. It's an undefined state. I don't know who, but that that can't happen if you're talking about numbers. If you're talking about numbers and you make it so it's solid. If you if you make the the programming so it's rock solid. It'll go on forever. Like I said, when I wrote, when I wrote my theory, my primary goal was 
was what what was it was so the the program would never fail you know that was the number one goal you know if the universe emerged that was that was nice too you know I used to work at Ford Motor Company I wrote their alarm notification system that was where you know events from the shop floor would occur and they would have to uh, page people or, or send signals and send emails and stuff like that to alert people of, of things that were on the floor so this system had to work it had I mean if if the system didn't work, if it, if it caused like uh, some plant downtime, it'd be like a hundred thousand uh, dollars a minute. Sometimes you know, ten thousand, fifty thousand dollars a minute every minute that plant was down. Believe me, they paid me good money to make sure my software never ever failed, man. It was solid, man. It was a hundred percent uptime system, you know. It was no fail system. So I think the universe is the same way. It's it's programmed to never ever fail. All right, anyway. Um, they were talking about um, that. I was suggesting that, you know, that we're talking about a deterministic universe and I'm, it's solid and I'm, it could always uh, result in the same thing every time, you know. And he's saying, yeah, but then he's saying, well, you know, there can be, uh, there can be some behavior that's impossible to predict. I, I'm asking, no, I don't think so. I'm saying it's impossible to predict the behavior in advance because of why. Okay, he comes back, he goes, well, okay. There are several reasons why it can be difficult to predict the behavior of a complex system like the universe in advance, even if the system is deterministic. Now, he's talking about the same, I mean, um... Okay, well, I mean, I think I, I misunderstood him here. I should have apologized to him here. He was saying that it would be impossible to predict precisely, you know, based, you know, like how do you program the thing to know how, what it's going to turn out to kind of thing, you know. And that that's, that's totally true. Totally true. You have no idea what's going to come out based upon the programming, okay. And there's actual uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff uh that is uh, evolved around that, including the halting problem, and we'll, we'll get into all that stuff right now, okay? <laughs> so he's saying, yeah, if you wanted to program it, it'd be really ha hard to program it, because um, you don't really know what's going to happen just based upon, like, you know, if you just try shit out and uh, you don't know the additional conditions of the Big Bang and all that stuff, okay? All right. All right, so, uh, so, here's, so he comes back, he says, okay, well, all right. One reason that the universe is highly sensitive to its initial conditions, even small variations in the initial conditions of a system, can lead to vastly different outcomes over phenomenon. This is known as chaos theory. Actually, that's called the butterfly effect. You ever heard that? The butter. That's where they say the flapping of a butterfly, like like uh, like ten years later, can cause a hurricane to occur around the world because it can cause some disturbances in the atmosphere that ripple on down. And they eventually. Because that, because that flapping, 10 years later, you have a hurricane like in the other side of the world. That's called the butterfly effect. That's uh, called, that's from a phenomenon known as chaos theory, and it can make it difficult or impossible to predict the long-term behavior of complex systems. That's absolutely true. Another reason is that our understanding of the universe is limited by the amount of data we have, uh, and recently on our model, even if we have complete understanding of the uh, underlying physical laws that Govern the behavior of the universe. It may be difficult to apply those laws, make accurate predictions about complex systems that involve many interacting parts. I think what he's saying there, for, there's parts of the universe we can't even see, so really we really don't know what's out there. So we don't know how much mass, for example, uh, to load into our initial uh, a system. How much mass is really there? You know. Finally, there may be fundamental limits. So what we can know about the universe, for example, the uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics state that we can never precisely measure both the position and velocity of a particle at the same time, which can make it difficult to predict the behavior of quantum systems. Similarly, the theory of relativity predicts that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light, which can limit our ability to observe distant parts of the universe in real time. Okay. Now, uh, at this juncture, you, uh, I was thinking that he was talking about the, uh, 
the idea that you can't really predict in the future, okay, what's going to happen based upon the, uh, the initial state. And I, 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 I knew that was, that was actually uh, part of the halting problem, but I couldn't remember the guy's name, <laughs> okay. So I asked him who, uh, I couldn't remember um, Turing's name, okay. So I asked him, who was the scientist that solved the Enigma machine? That was Turing, too. He came back, the scientist who played a pivotal role in cracking the Enigma machine during World War II was Alan Turing, a British mathematician and computer scientist. Okay, now I, I remember his name because I can't really think of stuff you know, anymore. I go, right, Turing. Did Turing have a theory that limits how much we can predict about an algorithm's execution? Now, remember I was talking about that? I, I mentioned that back in my document, remember? And I talked about it. I said we were going to talk about it here. And here's where we start talking about it right here. So he's right with me. He goes, yes. <laughs> Alan Turing developed a theory called the halting problem, which essentially states that there is no algorithm that can determine whether any given program will eventually halt or, or reach a final result or run for forever in an infinite loop. You just don't know what it's really doing, okay? This means that there are some limitations to what we can predict about the execution of algorithms, even if we know their rules and initial conditions. Now, he's absolutely right about that. Turing actually, the, the proof of that is really, really, um, it's creative, okay? Um, I don't want to get off on a big tangent about it, but uh, the way he proved it, he had, a, a, he had an algorithm, and he, he tried to have a machine that could detect if an algorithm is going to blow up or not. And he fed, he fed the algorithm back into itself, into its own machine. And he made it so uh, it was like a paradox. It couldn't, it could never win, okay? And the fact that it couldn't solve its own problem, that proved that it couldn't solve all problems, right? <laughs> That's how he proved that. He's a smart guy, that, that Alan Turing. He really was, okay? All right. Um, at this juncture, I say, I can't tell if you're a machine. You have all the answers I'm looking for. Thank you again. He goes, you're welcome. I am an AI language model developed by OpenAI. So while I'm not human, I can still provide information and answers to your question to the best of my to my ability, to the best of my ability, based on my programming and training. Well, they fucking program and train this thing really goddamn well, man. God, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the video right there because Tucker Carlson's coming up right now, and we're gonna get back to it right here. This is like the most amazing thing. I just can't believe that they have technology like this. It's fucking scary.